Today I want to give you my initial impressions of Dreadnought after playing the game for a couple of hours. It's a free-to-play title that is currently in open beta by Grey Box Games. They're the publisher of the game as well as the sponsor of this video, but of course I will be giving you my honest opinion because otherwise my opinion wouldn't be worth very much. Now if you want to go ahead and try out this game yourself as well, there's a link down below uh, in the description of this video that will take you to the official website. And like I said, it's free to play, so if you like what you see, you can most definitely go ahead and give it a try. Now this is a game that is all about massive star battles. We have all kinds of starships that we can use to fight opposing starships with as well. And I'll quickly jump into a game here in just a couple of minutes. But first and foremost, I want to show you around the menus. So most importantly, right here at the top of the screen, there is a button that says Tech Trees. And this is where you will be spending quite a bit of time, because this is basically the path uh, at which you will unlock additional starships. So initially, you will start off with only a single one right here. There are a couple of different, I guess, factions right here on the left-hand side as well. Uh, and you will slowly progress through all of the different tiers and the different ships as well. For example, if I would like to unlock the next one right here, the Tier 3, uh, Otranto? Otranto, I guess is how we would pronounce that. There are a couple of requirements that I will have to fulfill, but eventually I'm going to be able to unlock different ships here over time. On top of that, and that is actually one of my favorite parts about this game, I can go ahead and unlock new abilities, weapons, as well as customizations, uh, as well as like different modules and whatnot on the ships that I've already got. So this is one that I recently unlocked right here. There are some repeater turrets on it, which is one of my primary, uh, one of my primary weapons. I can also get the flak turrets right here, and I can actually research into different kinds of abilities if I would like to. The same can be said for the different modules right here that you can see uh, that are currently attached to this ship. As far as I'm aware, uh, there are four available for each and every ship. And basically what it all comes down to is that there is a ton of customization. If you don't like one of the weapons on your, uh, on your ship, you can go ahead and unlock different ones here over time as well. However, I do think that the easiest way for me to explain what this game is all about is just by simply jumping into a match. So I've selected the Veteran Fleet as well as the Proving Grounds and I'm currently in the matchmaking queue. Alrighty, so here we are on the rings of Saturn. Now, I've got a couple of teammates with me right now, and we're gonna try and duke it out in this multiplayer match. Now, in this particular game mode, there are, uh, there's, uh, well, I guess there's technically speaking two ways of winning. Either the timer in the bottom right corner runs out, and the team with the most points will end up winning, or we can just simply get to 100 points by destroying 25 of the enemy ships here in total. And of course, we lose as well uh, if the enemies do end up killing us before we get to that point. Now, there are quite a few different classes in this game. Already, <laughs> one of the enemy ships just ended up taking a, a significant amount of damage. But there are five different classes in the game. And I'll show you a little bit more what those are all about after this game right here, after this match. Um, essentially, though, we are currently playing a Dreadnought, which is one of the five classes. And the Dreadnought is more or less the tank of the party. There's going to be a range damage dealer. There's going to be short range combat here as well. Uh, and there's also going to be healers and anything along those lines. So if you recognize, hey, my team should really make use of uh, one of the other classes instead, you can indeed switch on the fly after you have died in one of the specific rounds. Now at the top side of the screen, you can see the four different um, modules that I've currently got activated for the ship. So for example, I can activate my four ability right now that I'm locked onto this target, which is gonna warp me very close to that opposing ship right there. And I'm gonna try and see if I can do a significant amount of damage. I'm gonna activate the additional power up, and I'm gonna, well, I was gonna activate my missiles and whatnot there, uh, but it really wasn't necessary as we already got the final blow on that enemy player, which is great. Now we are in a bit of a weird angle here. I can indeed try and fly out of here if I absolutely wanted to. Um, I can also go ahead and select some additional shielding right there. This is, by the way, our power management. Uh, the right-hand bar here on the side of the screen that currently says the number 10, and it's rapidly increasing. Uh, this is essentially our power management. We can either increase our thrust, amplify our weapons, or get some additional shielding. Now, by hitting shift as well as spacebar on the keyboard, I can move around here. And I'm in a bit of a weird angle, so I think I'm once again going to activate my warp jump. Although, if this guy wants to really fight me, I think I'm okay with that as well. I'm once again activating all of my different cooldowns here at the top of the screen, trying to do as much damage as I can. And you can see the amount of damage that this Dreadnought does in one-on-one -on -one combat is very, very solid. I'm activating my 4 ability now, which is once again at warp space, to try and get a little bit closer to my allies. And at the same time, I'm also going to start reloading my left weapon here, which you may notice here as well, by that bar slowly increasing. So currently, this one has got 20 rounds. I can switch to another weapon here as well, called the Heavy Flak turrets. 
They basically are more or less like a... I feel like they're more or less like a shotgun. They only got 15 rounds. So let's make sure we uh, we reload that one as well. And this is essentially what the game is all about. You gotta try your very best and kill the opposing ships before they can kill yours. Now, we're currently actually uh, in a very good spot. There's already 32 points for my team versus zero of the opposing. Which is obviously going to be uh, pretty, uh, pretty helpful for us. I do have couple of allies with me here as well, which does make this easier. Let's switch back to the heavy plasma cannons, though, and see if we can potentially lock on onto the ship as well. So notice right there above the ship, right? Uh, above uh, the, his health bar, there are a couple of grayed out buttons, which correspond uh, with the cooldowns that I've got activated for my ship. So if I get close enough to this guy, I'm going to be able to warp straight towards his position. And that's essentially what I'm trying to do right now. I want to make sure that I warp jump straight on top of this, uh, of this opposing ship. So we can potentially take him out. Now, I can already start dealing a little bit of damage. I don't really think we need to, but let's go ahead and, uh, and reload here. I'm trying to close in on his position. Let's speed up for just a second. I think he is trying to get away from me as well. But right there, the button greened out. I'm going to activate my additional damage boost, and I'm currently warping to watch his position. There we go. Trying to do whatever damage I can. Activating my 2 ability. Activating my 3 ability. Activating my 1 ability. We're nuking him down. And this is another player right here, right? We're trying to do as much damage here as we can. Let's try and see if we can increase some of the healing as well, or the amount of the shooting that we got as well. Try to make sure that he kills us, or that we kill him rather, before he kills us. And we do indeed get another kill picked up there, which is very, very nice. So far, things are looking rather solid for us in this match right here. Now, there is apparently a battle over here below me too. Sometimes, you know, the, uh, the ship itself can, can block the vision radius, which can be a little bit annoying. Just because... Uh, the ship is rather big. Let's go ahead and once again activate my missiles, which are very good. Activate some damage here as well and amplify it. And Well, you could see the impact coming in right there of my missiles. They are extremely powerful. And if the enemy does not recognize that I am above them, that is going to be a great way for me to deal some damage. Now, I'm mostly trying to keep my, my warp jump off cooldown. There is going to be a tier 4 ship out there in the open as well, which is a very scary one. Ideally, I'd focus on this one here instead. Activating my other weapon right now as well. I guess I can jump towards this guy. I guess I can jump towards this guy. He's already trying to get out of there. So let's make sure that he cannot do that. Currently warp jumping towards him. He's going to be very close by. Activating my second ability. I actually think that that was a different ship right there. We do get another kill picked up there though, which is very nice. We are currently under heavy amounts of fire here, which I don't quite want to deal with. Let's activate the shielding here as well. Although I'm currently out of energy. Trying to do damage right here to this running by ship and we do get an assist on that one. There's another one here flying about. It actually, uh, I just lost a line of sight, which is a little bit frustrating. My ship is currently about 60% of the way uh, gone when it comes to HP, but only one of my teammates have fallen down so far. And actually, I'm feeling confident. Let's jump to this, uh, this hawker over here too. Currently warping towards him. Activating my missiles once again. They're currently firing. We're locked onto the target. Trying to do as much damage as we can. And we do indeed get another captain kill there as well. Now, I'll be honest, this is an extremely powerful ship, okay? The ship that I'm currently playing with is, is very, very good. And usually it seems like uh, on just a basic level. And actually, I gotta be careful here. Because this is another tier 4 ship here. But usually the tiers are going to be massive indications of how much you can actually do. Now, I'm trying my very best to nuke this one down before he can nuke me down. Although, it does look I may be under threat from a couple of different targets. Trying to warp jump out of there. Activating it right now. Oh, it's unavailable. It's unavailable. We do get another final kill uh, or a final blow there on that captain that we initially saw. Trying to once again activate my shielding. We are very, very low. I do have allies helping me out right now as well. But certainly, I do end up getting killed there just in the nick of time. You can see the cost of death. Now, my allies are still flying around. I think I'm just simply going to warp back into the battle though. I don't think we really need to worry about uh, changing our ship right now. If I really wanted to though, just for like... You know, showing you what it looks like, I suppose. I can switch her on the fly if I were, for example, to realize that, um, you know, we're running way too many Dreadnoughts and we would be better off with one of the uh, damage dealers instead or one of the healers. I can switch in between these rounds to make sure that we got a more streamlined composition. Now, we only need to kill one more enemy ship. As you may have already noticed, uh, we currently are at 96 points, which is great. I'm currently warping towards my ally here as well, which is uh, done by just simply hovering over them and locking onto the target. I'm hoping he's going to be a little bit closer to enemies. So this is one of the healers, by the way. Look at that. He's, uh, he's helping us out a bunch. 
making it easier. But apparently the final kill was already picked up. And in this round, we will be able to obtain the victory. I honestly think that that was probably the most one-sided game of Dreadnought that I have ever played. I don't think I've ever had a game code that one-sidedly. I've had a few where it goes like 100 points versus like 88 or 100 points versus like 92, which obviously means that you cannot really take that many risks. But at the end there, I could jump forward and play a little bit more aggressively and uh, not really worry too much about losing one of my ships. Regardless though, I quickly wanted to show you the different classes that are available right here as well. So like I said, you initially start off right here, if you start off with the Jupiter Arms, that is, uh, with the Augusta. And this is going to be a destroyer. Basically, the entire middle column right here is going to be the destroyer class. And I've already unlocked uh, this one right here as well, called the Travolgar. Now, if I wanted to, however, with Tier 3... I could go ahead and unlock the Ballista here instead. So the Ballista uh, is going to be a different kind of class here, all, cons or all things considered. Uh, and you can basically specialize in different kinds of strategies and tactics if you wanted to. At the same time, there's also going to be the Dreadnought, like I already explained. Right here on the right-hand side is the Corvette. And I actually really want to go ahead and give this one a try as well. I think this is going to be the next ship that I will unlock. Just because this one... Uh, as far as, like, the opposing players that I've seen play this ship, uh, it seems to be much faster and it deals a heck of a lot of damage, but it's very vulnerable as well. So I think I'm going to go ahead and play to unlock the Dover here next, which is the original super fast Corvette. Something completely different and it will change up the playstyle here as well. Uh, and then last but not least here on the right hand side too, there is going to be the tactical cruiser. So you can really, like, unlock different kinds of ships, um, enable them for the battles, and then switch between deaths to make sure that you get a well-rounded team composition. Now, there's also going to be uh, the Akula Vector, which is a completely different kind of setup. I mean, once again, there's tons of different uh, ships here available that you can indeed unlock, and all of them have got their own strengths and weaknesses. Now, like I said, right, be, besides just simply uh, getting the diff different ships and then customizing the ships as well in a way that you might prefer and getting different modules and weapons and whatnot on them, you can also change their appearance, which is pretty cool too. So if I wanted to, for example, uh, and I wanted to change the coating on this ship right here, and I wanted to, for some odd reason, be like fully yellow. I think this is like Bumblebee yellow right here, right? <laughs> if I wanted to, and, uh, and, and be very obvious for my opposing opponents, um, I guess opposing opponents is a little bit redundant, right? But anyway, if I wanted to, I could indeed get another paint job done on this, uh, on this ship to make myself stand out a little bit more. You can uh, get additional attachments here, and really, like all things considered, you can, you can change up the way your ships look if you like to. You don't have to. Like, appearance is obviously not as important as the loadout, at least in my opinion. Uh, but you can indeed change out the look of your units and your ships if you wanted to. So my initial impressions of this game, they are most definitely positive. I've been playing, like I said, for a couple of hours so far. I've already unlocked a couple of the different ships. I unlocked the different modules. I've attached some new weapons. And all things considered, it's awfully satisfying to jump from one game to another only to find out that your ship has become a little bit more powerful. Now, of course, that does mean that you're going to have to soak quite a bit of time into the game. And I can imagine there's, uh, there's quite a bit of grinding involved as well if you want to unlock every single last one of them. I mean, there's quite a few ships available, as well as a ton of different modules. And obviously, you gotta keep in mind as well is that there are people that can just simply spend a lot of money into the game and unlock things significantly faster. But from my understanding so far, there is no such thing as pay to win in this game. And you're gonna be capable of just simply unlocking everything over the course of time. Now, I think that considering there's quite a bit of grinding in this game, right? Uh, it would be a lot more fun to just simply go ahead and play this with a friend. But considering it's free to play, I mean... There's really not a whole lot that, you know, that should hold you back from just simply jumping in and trying it out for a couple of rounds and see if it is something you will enjoy as well. Other than that, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section of this video. I will try my very best to answer every single last one of them. But besides that, I want to thank you very much so for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? And I will see you in the next one.